Well, with me now is Ewan McGahey of King's College London, who specialises in employment law. Ewan, a very warm welcome to the programme. We were just chatting there off air about what these zero hours con uh, contracts mean for all sorts of different people. But paying attention to this story, what, what's your initial reaction to, to the strike of McDonald's workers? I think the first thing is that it has to be seen in context of the massive rise in wealth and income inequality, uh, particularly over the last sort of 30 to 40 years. Uh, so the, the McDonald's workers who are on strike in Cambridge and Quarley have been asking for £10 an hour. Uh, and, and this is against a CEO of McDonald's who's earning about 800 times that. Uh, so the CEO, Steve Easterbrook, gets up uh, in New Year's Day works half the day, finishes at lunch, takes the rest of the year for a holiday, and he will have already earned more money than some of these workers earn in the whole year. Um, and so it's, it's really a part of a wider phenomenon, which is the fight back against income inequality. And we know that McDonald's in particular, massive brand, paid out a huge amount of money to its shareholders. And yet it doesn't appear to be listening to its workers, those very people who generate the profits. Uh, no, I think that's accurate. Uh, I mean, uh, McDonald's has a workplace and labour relations uh, ethic, which is about on par with the Qatari government, if you'll <laughs> excuse the excellent staff at yeah. Al Jazeera. Uh, but it, it doesn't tolerate collective bargaining. It doesn't tolerate strike action. Um, it belittles people who want to take uh, action uh, to try and get a fair day's wage at a fair, uh, for a fair day's work. Um, and, and it's uh, very sad to see. I mean, if they want to end the McStrike, all they need to do is McBargain, but McDonald's is still refusing. They're still refusing. Uh, is part of that, that that if they did agree to, as you put it, McBargain, that, that perhaps other brands would have to follow suit? Uh, yeah, I, th I think that um, obviously this isn't uh, going to be an isolated incident. If we look at what's happened across the Atlantic in the United States, the fight for $15 an hour amongst the fast food workers uh, was a long process of a number of years uh, of growing collective engagement and solidarity. Uh, and, and so this is interesting because it's probably the start of uh, a number of similar actions. Uh, but the bottom line is that labour rights have been eroded over the last... 30 to 40 years and what's really needed is not just people to have a better minimum wage but for there to be mechanisms for fair wages and that means sectoral collective bargaining and a proactive government approach to encouraging uh, good fair wages through uh, sectoral collective agreements. Uh, uh, why don't we have that proactive government approach whether as you pointed out before it's with a foreign government or it's you know here in the UK I mean why are workers rights not further up the, the kind of chain of priorities? There's a lot of different views on why the Thatcher and Reagan government started this process of individualising workplace relations. Um, the ideology has a lot to do with it. Uh, I mean, the, the idea that uh, managers have the right to manage and workers shouldn't question that right to manage and shouldn't have more collective voices is a big part of it. Um, but whatever we see as the causes, what we do know is that countries that are... Uh, that, that, that have um, that give less favour to workers' rights and collective voice um, don't do as well when it comes to all sorts of indicators, not just income and quality, but productivity, um, human development. Uh, the, the, the countries that have kept good collective labour relations structures are doing far better in human development, and Britain and America have been falling behind. Fascinating stuff. Really interesting to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.